friends, for the next hour, joining us from Pakistan is Lieutenant General Hamid Ghul. You've seen the mainstream media say that he's, quote, quarterbacking and commanding all the attacks on our forces in Afghanistan and Pakistan. Of course, from my research, this is not the case. He was the big hero, the Pakistani general, the head of the ISI, who led the attacks against the Soviet invasion. Uh, and let me read over his bio, then he'll be with us for the next hour. Hamid Ghul was uh, commissioned to the Pakistani army in 58. He was an armored corps, 19 lancers, tank commander in major battles uh, on the front with India in 1965. During 72 to 76, he directly served under another top general as battalion commander uh, when General Zia was the GOC, 1st Armored Division and commander of the 2nd Corps. Uh, it goes on, Ghul was promoted to brigadier general in 1978 and steadily rose to be commander of the 1st Armored Division in 1980. Uh, Ghoul was then sent to H uh, to the GHQ as the DG Military Intelligence under a G a top general, who then nominated him as the ISI chief, succeeding uh, another general in March of 1987. He was later replaced by ISI commander uh, by Prime Minister Benazar Bhutto in May of 1989. He was then transferred to commander of the Second Corps. Uh, in this capacity, General Gull conducted uh, the. Zarb E. Moam military exercise in November, December of 89, the biggest Pakistani armed forces show of muscle since 71, Indo Pakistan war until now. So he's been a frontline commander and, of course, a general and the head of Pakistani uh, intelligence. And I won't go any further. I've got a huge laundry list of things to talk about with the general. Two years ago, when they had the Mumbai attacks, he came on the show and said the evidence shows it was staged by British Israeli. Uh, and uh, U.S. intelligence. It's now come out in the Chicago Tribune with the headline uh, that U.S. agent uh, was the head of that attack. Uh, the head of Indian intelligence also said the West led the false flag attack to blame it on Pakistan and to get Pakistan and India fighting again. That's how they play them off against each other. Uh, Hamid Ghul has also questioned the official story of 9-11. He's also going to give us his expert take on why the U.S. is, quote, failing in its war in Afghanistan. And he joins us now for a full hour. Uh, Lieutenant General Hamid Ghul, thank you for joining us. And thank you. My greetings to all your audience, please. Why did you uh, agree to come on this broadcast, General? Well, basically because my version is not going out to America. I have been denied the visa to travel to America. And uh, uh, these people would not let me into America because they're afraid that I will speak the truth. People will listen to the truth, and then they would find out that these people have made a mess of the American plans. They are actually deceiving their own people. The American generals are failing. The American intelligence is a disaster. And they know that I will speak in their idiom, and because I worked with them, I've done my intelligence course. You did not mention it in my uh, career record. I did an intelligence course in Okinawa when I was a captain under the U.S. Army. And uh, I know exactly where the failings are, and they do not want it exposed. But lately, I was quite concerned because I was on Fareed Zakria show, GPS, uh, from uh, two weeks back or maybe 10, 12 days back. And also with Becky Anderson, and uh, they cut me out totally. No, not Becky Anderson, but uh, Fried Zakria. He recorded me for 30 minutes, but he put out only six minutes of my version. So that is not fair because I was informed, and especially the things that I said, which were stark realities. And he wanted, uh, obviously, to keep the American people in dark about these things. Failings which are going on in Afghanistan of the American policy, of the American uh, uh, military generals, they are failing in every possible respect. I, this is my academic position, and I am prepared to face any general in America, any people in the academia, that, look, this is what is going wrong. I am a friend of American people. I criticize their policy, and they think that anyone who criticizes the policy is the enemy. This is totally wrong. This is a misperception. We work together with the CIA. We 
work together with the Americans. I have a lot of friends there. I respect them. And uh, I could also, my advice could also be useful like, even at this time because nobody understands the Afghan society better than I do because I worked with them. I read their soul. I read their spirit. And I know, I respect those people. I admire their courage and their valor. They have to be your friends. It's period. I'm telling you, you cannot afford to lose Afghanistan as a friendly country. But unfortunately, the way things are going, if they are not handled properly, the future of Afghanistan would be hostile to America, which would neither be in the interest of Pakistan nor in the interest of America and its allies. But, General, it would be in the interest of the global crime syndicate known as the New World Order that wants to bring order out of chaos, that wants to create crises, that wants to destabilize Pakistan and Afghanistan and ship hundreds of billions of dollars of opium out a year to the streets of America. They think we're so stupid, they admit on Fox News that our troops help grow the opium in Afghanistan now. So the reasons we're there, we're publicly told one thing, but we're actually there for another reason, destabilization. I want you to speak to that and see if you agree, but first... You are live, uncensored. What do you want to tell the American people on more than 80 AM and FM radio stations and the number one Internet radio show in the world? What do you want to tell the world about what's really happening in Afghanistan and Pakistan? Because just three weeks ago, they finally admitted that they had been lying and that U.S. advisors, troops and uh, mercenaries Blackwater and others have been operating illegally inside Pakistan in what I have analyzed to be a destabilization campaign. What's really going on over there, General? Well, we, we know that uh, Blackwater, now operating under the title of the Worldwide Services, and Dan Corp, which is another such organization, they are called the security contractors. This is a fundamental fault. There are 105,000 uh, security contractors, uh, uh, the troopers of the security contractors, operating in Afghanistan alone. And I guess there are no figures available. I think no less than 2,000 are operating inside Pakistan. Now, this is something which ought never have to be done because the, the reason is that the professional army is when they start engaging the services of civilians whose motivation is none other than uh, making money and cashing dollars, then you can expect the kind of results that the Americans are getting. And American people, the uh, taxpayers, they have to shuck out a lot of money. A lot of American blood is going to waste. Now, all this is a disaster because you... And now the latest one is the WikiLeaks. In this, again, all the compilation that they have been doing, on which they have been basing their plans, I tell you it's a disaster. It's an intelligence disaster. Why? Because they have heavily dependent, uh, they have depended on uh, the security contractors for even intelligence gathering. Now, imagine how can they be such foolish people? I mean, the CIA, the FBI, and all the other, and the... Uh, to top it all, there is this uh, Task Force 373, which has been indulging in massive civilian casualties. They've been killing people left, right, and center, and every time they have given the information, they have bombed the marriage parties, they have bombed uh, the uh, funeral processions, they have bombed innocent, uh, and they have even bombed the hospitals. So can you imagine that the intelligence based on uh, the information provided by security contractors has resulted in this massive violation of human rights. It has been anti-humanity. It has uh, destroyed everything that American people and American constitution ever stood for. It has defied the spirit of the original uh, charter of uh, America, American constitution and uh, human rights charter. Everything that you hold so dear to your heart, the American people, they have violated it uh, here in Pakistan and Afghanistan. General, let me go back to something you said. I'm going to put it in layman terms. You have tens of billions of dollars in no-bid contracts going to DynCorp, going to XZ, 
uh, formerly Blackwater, Blackwater Worldwide. They have a incentive to want the wars to continue and to be expanded because they're making billions of dollars out of it. So, of course, they're going to give intelligence to blame Pakistan and widen the war. Of course, they're going to give intelligence that targets civilians, knowing that there is the honor code in Pakistan and Afghanistan, just like there was in the past here in America, before we lost our souls to a certain extent, that if you kill somebody's wife or children, they are going to kill you or die trying to kill you with this blood honor debt. That's why they continue. And now they admit have the CIA and the Army piloting drones from Virginia, and they are uh, killing, quote, in fact, guys, search this term, no Name terrorist. If someone has a gun, when everybody has guns over there, it's a, you know, so-called free country like America used to be, and they are killing innocent people, knowing it's going to stir them up and make them mad, so they fight back. Then they can call them terrorist. Then they can expand the war. Then the contractors can make more money. Precisely, Alex. This is exactly you have painted it so beautifully. And so vividly, it, there could not be a better explanation. This honor code is as old as the Afghan society itself. I mean, it runs through their blood for past 50, 5,000 years. And this is called Pakhtun Wali. Pakhtun Wali is an honor code. This, is, this evokes even stronger sentiments than the religion. Therefore, these people are not going to forgive all this. And I am afraid that uh, we will have lost this region forever to America, to the West. And this will not be good for us. I agree. I, I think it is still time that we redress the situation. And some sense is driven into the heads which, are, which seem to be totally uh, blocked to or impervious to any kind of sensible suggestion. But I think we must keep on trying. I think these are the, this is the last lap and in which we are now going. And this struggle is going to end in a very big disaster for American reputation, for their honor, for their self-respect, and we don't want to have this done. I, I can assure you, I genuinely am telling this, because American people are such noble pe people. Sometimes they say they are so gullible and they are so innocent that uh, this borders on being criminally innocent. Because of their innocence, we are suffering. We are suffering for no rhyme or reason at all. But because American people's gullibility, their uh, innocence is exploited by their leaders, that is why we suffer and they suffer as well. well so I think this is time now we redress the situation. Well, General, as you know, this is the divide and conquer British model. Uh, you had Mohammed Mosaddegh somewhat secular, pro-Western, but he wanted to build up Iran and keep some of their own money. So they used radical Muslims to overthrow him. Then they put the Shah in and uh, double-crossed uh, the, 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 the Muslims. Uh, then the same thing with the Serbs. Uh, they used the Albanians to break up southern Serbia. Same thing with Saddam. They put him in power. They have him overthrow the Ba'athist. They put him in power. They have him attack Iran. Then they tell him invade Kuwait. Then they set him up. Now they've set up sectarian Sunni Shiite violence. Everything is to, is to break down and destabilize your countries. I mean, so there is a rhyme and reason to this. It's just so cold-blooded and so evil, the average person cannot grasp it. Yeah, that's right, uh, Alex. I think uh, America, uh, American policymakers have, uh, for, for their own reason, I don't know, I have not been able to fathom that as yet, but they have allowed the old British uh, uh, what what would we say uh, mischievous mind to lead American policy making by the nose and I can tell you I know them I have worked with them I did my staff course there in Camberley in the UK and I know them inside out they are extremely jealous of America they do not want to see America flourish inside their heart they don't they want to pull their leg they make full of them and they talk about it they uh, they have uh, uh, coined jokes for for the americans so this is this has to be done away with that is fundamental the other power which for its own reason and those are very mischievous reasons that is israel and israel now is joined in by the indians unfortunately so this 
together they form the club that club is you can call it the uh, extra or uh, ultra imperial club this imp-